I don't know if you've revealed this to public or anything just yet, but you've <laughs> KO or you don't really mind? No, KO. KO or, or definitely a stoppage. Had an old you have two kids? Yeah, I've had two kids for one of them six, one's nine. Bro. I go into my apartment, had to strip naked and just lie there and just, <laughs> just rub oh, one out. It's That's a way, <laughs> it's a way of dealing with it. <laughs> Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, and all the rest of the, um, what do you call it? People, all the rest of the people in the world. Different, <laughs> no. different pronouns? Pronouns, that's the word. <laughs> Guys, I didn't just get this beautiful man on here today. We are joined by a very special guest. Some people have said we look very similar. I, in fact, think he's the way better looking version. Maybe we were separated at birth and he didn't land on his head like I did. <laughs> Guys, welcome. Brent Leon. Hey, is that, hey, hey, is that hey. the right last name? Well, technically, that's my Instagram name. Instagram that's my middle name. name. Uh, oh, but my wow. last name is Vitiello. Yeah, because I remember your. I remember I met you ages ago, and your last name was wasn't Leon, but like I saw your Instagram. I'm like, I'll just go off the Instagram name. It's probably Everyone most, else does. most people else kind does. of. Is that Italian? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Look yeah, how yeah, beautiful yeah. he is. You yeah, think he's, he's not right, Italian? Vitiello, like uh, guys. It, <laughs> Blushing already. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on anyways, bro. It's uh, fucking- It's a pleasure, man. Lovely pleasure to see to you again. It's been what? What year are we in? 2022. It's, when did I, I met you once and it was in 2016, I think. Wow. I was filming. While. Yeah, I remember in uh, Bondi. I was filming in Bondi with uh, Chess Bra yep, at the yep, time, yep, like a little yep. prank. And I can't remember exactly, but I think, did one of your mates, you were with one of your mates, I think. Yeah. Me and him walked up and Chess Bra was the abusive boyfriend and I was dressed as a chick. Yeah. And I, remember, I, I think you were living in Dubai at the time. I was, I was only back visiting at the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nah, yeah, interesting. Definitely. Yeah, we'll walk around Bondi just filming. This is back early days for me. This is when I first started and briefly met and um, a lot's happened for you over the last five, six years anyway, it seems. Something like that. So what's been happening, mate? How was, um, obviously for anyone watching, if you're somewhere else in the world and you haven't seen this beautiful specimen yet, most people in Australia definitely would have. He's just come off uh, Married at First Sight, very popular member of the recent show. He's just a beautiful soul and I'm going to stop ass licking now even though I want to keep going. No, you're hyping him up because you look like him. That's why. You're like, he's the most beautiful person ever and he keeps saying, oh, we look alike. It's true. Everyone does say we look alike. I'm like, I just told people, yeah, he's my little brother. Yeah. <laughs> he's my little brother. I'll That's claim that any day of the week because I definitely look like the shit ugly brother and I'm okay with it. I'll take it. Just don't leave me I out. don't think so. I think we could lock arms and we'd look like twins, but it's just me. Your jawline's too nice. That's what it is. Very similar oh. I'm seeing from you. Really? Mm. See? See, I'm going to get See? a big head from this episode. There you go. How was the show? I wanna, I've got a bunch of questions, a few fan questions. There's a lot I want to talk about today. Um, once again, thanks so much for coming on, bro. It's lovely to see your face. Thank you. So you went on Married at First Sight. How was that experience? Just fill us in a little bit. It was a brilliant fuckery in one way to put it. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was an amazing, amazing journey, uh, but it's definitely what they call an experiment. It, for was, sure. it was quite tough to... To get married and live <laughs> and like fast track everything you're supposed to do in a marriage in, in such a short amount of time, especially with someone that was so hostile. Oh man, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't want to jump the gun there, but like you weren't paired up with the most ideal partner. Let's let's be honest. That's one way to put it. Um, yeah, we didn't exactly get along as well as uh, you'd hope to be. Married. That's a very gentleman, polite way to put it. You just weren't the right match. Yeah, but I mean, the, I think that's we'll start with that. <laughs> yeah. We I weren't the, the right match. Start one. You know, exactly. Part, one. part two was just, yeah, everything was just, uh, how would you put it? It was just a bit of a, I mean, there were sometimes we got along well, other times we're just a complete disaster. Mm -hmm. But for everyone else, I think it, great, it made great TV for everyone else. Well, I think essentially, you know, as 99% of the viewers would think, it, you know, it really showed your like kind, caring, sensitive, nice, like gentleman sort of side, but it and just made her not really look like the nicest person. Yeah. And I mean, it's just what happens. It's reality TV at the end of the day and people's true colors will show. And, you know, I think, I, I didn't watch the whole series, but I've watched plenty of highlights. I watched her getting angry at you for not using your fork properly and <laughs> just all, all sorts of stuff. And it just seems like she just lacks a bit of empathy, I think. I think that could be it. It lacks empathy. And I think it just, I don't think she really cares too much about anything other than her views. Yeah. Well, I don't think she was there for to find love or to, to meet someone and take it somewhat seriously. Like, I think maybe he was just there for the opportunity to get a name out there, but perhaps. That's what I believe. I, I, I think, I mean, I think everyone in a sense goes onto these shows wanting that, that hype and that thing. Yeah, and if course. anyone says they're not, yeah, you know the first why thing they say, I'm going to get famous, you know what I mean? You Everyone know why that. you're going on yeah. TV. At the same time, like you can say, like, if they paired me up with someone I fell in love, great. Hell yeah. yeah. That's a bonus. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Well, we were in lockdown anyway. What more did I have to lose? Nothing else going um, on, really. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the case. I think it was just more of wanting to be 
you know, the villain, like the, you know, some of the past uh, girls that have been on there before and it kind of backfired and I just didn't think it went her way and mm. yeah. Just well, I don't, I, I'd probably go as far as saying she wasn't quite the most hated female guest on the show. I think that what was the other girl's name? The um, man, she had some. I would say if they're talking about it anyway, it'd probably be Olivia. I think that's the one. That's the one. I couldn't. I, I couldn't think of the name straight off the top of my head. It's been a long day. It's been a very long day, everyone. But that's the one. I remember just seeing viral videos on TikTok and the YouTube moments would pop up, and I have a little watch, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot went down, man. It's it sucked, you know. I was friends with Olivia throughout the whole thing, and if you're friends with Olivia, you know she's she's quite a cool person. Mm. She really is. It's just she's one of those people that when once she's in conflict, mm. uh, I think she loses the moral compass there and can get quite nasty. No chill. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, yeah, like the way I was brought up, you've got to find that, that balance in between. There's certain lines you don't cross, yep. certain things you do and don't do. And I just don't think she has that. And I think when she's in conflict, she just turns a little bit. So it's <clears throat> a bit of a shame. No, I agree there. And I think if there's one thing that I've learned over the years of doing social media stuff and being around that kind of world, like the entertainment industry, whether it's television or social media, anything... I've always learned to never judge people or make my opinions out of people from just what I see, whether it's online or on television or any of these things, because like you said, she could be a pretty cool person in these things. And I've hung around all kinds of like famous people, people that are just well known and stuff who to the public eye, are very, not many people like them. They think they're bad, this, that, but I'm hung out and I'm like, they're all right. Like off, off camera when they're just themselves and it's just. Exactly. They're, Sometimes they're it's people. just like a big act. You know what I mean? People put on this persona of like being like, you know, trying to grab the most attention. And shit well, like sometimes that. people that play yeah. the villain role exactly. blow up. People that, that sometimes like hate goes more viral than love. A lot, yeah. a lot of the time more so, you know, so. Well, for history shows from the from the show itself, it, it that's exactly what happened. You exactly. know, the, the villains ended up, you know, growing the most. Mm. Whereas for the first time ever, the show's done a, a complete 360 and the people that weren't those people. The nice people. A, a, the nice people blow up. And rightfully so. I'd like to think so. Rightfully so. I and think it's a nice balance. Yeah, it is. And don't get me wrong, I never pretend to be the Mr. <coughs> nice. I like I have my my down. Do you know what I mean? But it was just in, in this sense, it was you try, you try and be a gentleman, you still get shot on. Yep. Then you fight back. And then I also realize you, when you're fighting and you're fighting with a woman, you've got to you've got to have that boundary. Yeah. It, it's still a woman. So 100%. You know, I just it's not that I played it smart, but I played it in the way that I would that I've tried to teach myself for years to be yeah. a half decent human. Yeah, well, you're just going to be yourself, man. I think you did a good job at that, you know, just portrayed who you are, like you stood like firm in your beliefs and morals and stuff. And I think that's why you gained so much popularity and a lot of love from being on the show is you you just were being yourself. Or I feel like a lot of people that go into reality television, whether it's that actual program or a different type of show, they feel like they have to act out or suppress who they are or be extra and that can always end bad sometimes and good. But I think when people are raw and genuine to themselves, it pays off and it goes a long way. So couldn't agree more. I think this, this season showed it for sure. hundred percent. And like you said, mate, I think it's one of the first times in a good while where like the good guys, you know, like the, the nice friendly people that aren't there for drama were the most popular on there. So yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. Beautiful. I had a little question. Like what is the process behind getting in there? Like what, a lot of people know, like you just apply and stuff and you go like, was there like heaps of auditions? Did, was it very hard to get on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what? I think in a sense where their producers are looking for, okay, obviously they're going to look for good TV, but they're looking for, you know, how stable you are. They're looking for a good storyline. They're looking for, you know, how you interact with other people, you know, a whole bunch of things. How so, handsome you are. Yeah, well. <laughs> Here I go again. <laughs> you, know, you, you put me off. <laughs> put me off now. I don't know what I'm doing. Ignore me. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like you've got you've got questionnaires, you've got you know uh, your medicals, you've got your physicals, you've got your let's call it their mentals. Mm -hmm. You know they go over you stuff. Make sure like you're that. not a full blown psychopath. Yeah, um, they go through your records. They go through everything. Yep. Um, and I'm sure that things do slip through, you know through the cracks, but. <laughs> that, that's what they're looking for. And in a sense, I get it from both ends. Yep. Like I've always understood that. You, they want something that's going to make good TV for people. Also, they want to get, you know, a good dynamic of different personalities yep. and all this stuff as well. So they would have some people on there who are like character, like clash, right? Just for TV. For sure. Surely, yeah. Well, you're not going to stick 20 of the same people in there. Otherwise, it's just everyone's going to be best friends. <laughs> Everyone gets boring. along, happily gets married, the TV done. Yeah. Right? Like if, we're all, if we're all like holding hands, singing Kumbaya, you'd be like, all right, well, I'm done. Yeah, 100%. Exactly. Whereas exactly. this season, I think, broke records. You, like need to throw, you need to throw a few people in there, like a few blue-haired activists, a few vegans, maybe like a gay person or a lesbian, which is great if you're that. Like, no, hey, I love that. Um, I actually wish there was gays in there because you know what? For, for me, some of the gays I know are the best, 
have the best personalities, but they are sassy. So it kind of slips. Very interesting, that, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, I, and I love it because I'm like, oh, there they go. Yeah. So I think that would have been an even better dynamic too. Yeah, well, I think on a married at first, you know what? They might end up doing a series where it is the same sex kind of marriage sort of show. And, and I think that would probably go pretty well. Well, I think they've done it before. They've done it before. I know they did it in season, what was I? Nine, eight, seven. Yeah, okay. I think they did it in seven. I think they put two gay women. I haven't watched a lot of TV for these. That's probably why it slipped my mind. But I mean, seeing that you were on there and seeing, I was like, oh shit, I know that dude. That's really cool. Good to see you doing well. And then I I watched a few things, but I haven't watched a lot of TV in the last few years. But from what I've seen, like a lot of reality TV, especially in Australia, is really, really popular right now. So yeah, I think, well, you know what? I think they're getting smarter in in terms of if you're going to pick people, pick people that are well known in a sense where a lot more people will watch. Yeah, 100%. So if you get a dynamic, like I think in the sense of, okay, I lived here. Did, did a lot of stuff here, lived in Dubai. So you've got, we've got people from all over that'll watch. Yep. Um, and I think with a lot of people in there, that was the kind of the same case. So I think that's smart from producer's sense that, you know, if you're going to start picking people, pick people that you're going to get different audiences yeah. watching. So you get all these different dynamics. And, and look at the viewer, the viewing, I think. Well, the viewership reached, will go through the roof. Almost reached 2 million. Oh, uh, shit. So that's huge. Like, I think as, like as an average viewership? Yeah. Dude, considering Australia's population is what, like 26 or 27 million maybe? Something like that. So that's massive. I don't know. Any TV shows hitting those numbers these nah. days. No, no. no. Yeah. Not they're in dead. Australia or anyway. No, they're not. So that's, no. that's massive. Yeah, that is huge. So love or hate, it was huge. Well done. And I'm crediting that entirely to you and you only. <laughs> 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 no, I think I think the girls win that one a little bit more. No, nah, there was a lot of drama fueled stuff in that in that series from what I saw. So a lot oh, of girls oh, were beefing, mate. a lot of it was looking heated. But. It was. It really was. It was even worse behind the scenes. But it's <laughs> it, it was worse because you saw. Don't get me wrong. Everyone made mistakes. I screwed up a few times in there where I had to apologize. We all get to that point. You know, no one's perfect. But there was just I think. I saw grown women act like mean girls, mm. and that movie is based of women that are in high school and mm. it's still not over. So I'm just sitting, like a lot of it was just like, yo, when does that stop? It kind of did take you back to high school a little bit. Yeah. Like they've got the cool girl click in the bag, like the loser click. Like it's like girls are just being nasty. Yeah, and yeah. you'd see it, they'd be in the corner, it's like talking shit, like the yeah. dumbest, <laughs> dumbest comments and the dumbest stuff. And you just sit back watching it. Cause don't forget, we don't, we get to watch it live with everyone else. Mm-hmm. We don't get to see all like the clips. Oh yeah. And you're sitting there watching it going, really, they said that? Like there was once when I was walking in, all the girls would go, oh, pff, I'd stab him for you or something like that. Or, huh? oh, pff, oh, that looks like shit. Or he's worn that jacket before. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like really? Like, yeah, come on, man. What, what are you just putting it on? You, you never know, mate. Like, you never yeah. know. They, they might have been. But I think like, I think it comes down to like a lot of ego clashing. You know, I think. For when, sure. I think that's the problem when, when too much ego is in the one room. It's like, and people don't know how to handle that. Like, it's pretty, it's healthy for everyone to have somewhat of an ego. You need yeah. it, you know, but I think. The, what separates it is a lot of people know how to turn it on and off. It's like there's a time and place to to really just push the ego aside, have a normal, civil, mature conversation. And but I think with shows like that, like it's not even just a women thing. It could be guys as well. You know, it's ego clashing. That's what just creates drama, jealousy as well. Like yeah. you might be paired up with a chick that someone else is like fuck. I wish I had that chick. You know, and then same vice versa. So that could yeah, really well be a reason. I think that came out a lot in the end of the show too. Mm. I think people started realizing that some would be favored. Or you could tell who would be who would look better once it aired, who wouldn't, and then yep. then then I think that envy came out, and you can just see the like the the snide parts of people kept coming out even more, and I, f- I think that even happened in my own my own relationship on there. Yeah, and I was just like, oh. so would you say in general, would you say it was a good experience or just look? I loved it. Yeah, it, it changed my life. The good I and mean, the bad. Yeah, I look. You have to have a, a strong backbone to do something like this. Definitely, but. I mean, it teaches you a lot. It taught me patience. It taught me a lot about myself and what definitely I need to fix. Yep. Um, but I love the whole experience. And like the opportunities I have now, I'm not going to pretend like you don't enjoy them because it's it's it humbles you and it makes you feel amazing. I, I'm not complaining. It, that some of the stuff that's opened up now has been amazing. And even having a voice for, for people that don't. Exactly, mate. Well, um, that's it. You deserve it. You know, you went on there. And like you said, you have to have a strong backbone. You can't go on there and not be able to take criticism, whether it's from the viewership or the people that you're on the show with, you're going to, you got to be prepared for those things. So, I mean, you deserve all the success and everything else that's popped up. I think you did really well on the show. So from, that, from, from what I watched, but when you got here, you were, you were briefly talking about, I don't know if you've revealed this to public or anything just yet, but you've your relationship status. Uh, yep. Is, yep, that, yep. is that fresh? It's very fresh. Yes. I uh, am now taken. Oh, I am now taken. Damn. So I'm going to have to try and find someone else. They're all, all going to have to go for the brother now. 
Damn it. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, I'm going to send everyone over. All I've right, been single for a while. I've been single for five, six months now. One at a time. I've been I was single for over five years. So uh, enjoy it, man. Yeah. Enjoy it. It's I haven't been single for a very long period of time since I was like 18, believe it or not. You know, and I've had a lot of fun and I don't regret any of my relationships. But mm-hmm. this has been the longest I've been single for for a very long time. And, you know, after the first few months where it's a bit rough and you're just getting used to new adaptions to life and all sorts of things and you're like... I actually like this. I can put all my energy and time into myself now and I don't have to feel bad for being selfish. I can focus purely on me, my work, my training, everything else I want to do, I can do it. I don't have to worry about answering to other people or making sure someone else is happy or going here or there and constantly talking. And don't get me wrong, relationships are beautiful and they're great. It's it's one of the best things in the world. I think relationships are one of the best things in life. Mm-hmm. But I'm definitely enjoying being single again. And I think you should. Look, you've got a lot going for you too, man. And you've got so much on your plate. To be honest with you, I loved being single. Yeah. Not for any other reason that you don't want that, but it's, I am a, I, I live a selfish life yep. and I live a very regimented life, my, no, you know, no, no. And, and I love being alone. So it, it is a very different thing now to kind of have a partner and it's going to be even a journey to try and learn each other yep. because I am, so there'll be sometimes where I need to be alone, do my own thing. I, I, I wake up, I'm, I'm at the gym at 5, 6 a.m. Yep. I'm training two, three times a day now with, you know, with the, the, the fight coming up. I want to talk, I definitely want to go into that a little bit. We, and we will, and we definitely <laughs> will. But just just as, as normal. And then when, when I've been working, training and doing all that, I get home and there's no movement or nothing. I want to eat and not move. Yep. Watch TV is my only way to shut off. You don't want some chick rubbing you up trying to get you can. <laughs> no, I don't have the energy. I don't have no, the energy. I've, you can poke me with a stick and I'm just like, uh, just like uh, uh, <laughs> No, I feel that. It's good so though. I guess I'm yeah, trying to find that healthy balance now. That's all right though, but like as you said, you've got a fight coming up. I do. And who's the who's the match against? Uh, Daniel. Daniel, who was also on the show on the season. Have, let me have a really quick look at this guy because I would like to have a little. I just want to visualize the man that's getting slapped. Cool. How do you spell his name? Daniel with a D. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to spell Daniel. Sorry, what's his like last name? H O L M E S. Have you been training much? Ah, mate, I'm, I'm two, two, three times a day. October fifteenth, right? I think that's, I saw on your Instagram. That's the one. Sick. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's he looks like a big, like, juice head sort of bodybuilder dude. Well, he was. And he's, I, I'm surprised he did drop down weight quite quite quick, which was really, really good to know that he's taking it serious. Yeah. Uh, we are fighting between 80 to 85 kilos. Uh, no headgear, three rounds. Oh, wow. No headgear. 16s no headgear? or? No headgear. 16. 16s. Yeah. How tall is he? Because he looks like he's pretty heavy. He's taller. He's yeah. definitely taller, but um, don't bother me in the slightest. Is it amateur, pro exhibition? Is it? It's going to, uh, I mean,. It's going to go under pro rules, but technically it'd be, I guess it'd be exhibition. Exhibition really. match, a celebrity match, really, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so where, where is the fight? Uh, Melbourne Pavilion. So it's in Melbourne, yeah, on October 15th. If you're watching this and you're in Melbourne, I suggest going and watching. Because not yeah. only will you see this guy with his shirt off, there'll be some action, there'll be a fight. Oh, they're going to be action. <laughs> so and you've got, you've got a bit of animosity with this guy, so you've got a bit of a history? Oh, look, uh, there's no <clears> real <throat> animosity. I couldn't care less. I don't think twice about the guy. Yep. I don't. I, I don't respect what he did on the show. You know, his whole cheating scandals and whatever else. What I don't respect is he's always he's always smug and doesn't care about the stupid stuff he does. Yeah, okay. And now all he does is sit there and, and cry and cry and cry about me and the person I am. And he hates, technically he hates the success. So he hates that people like He's me. one of those guys. He doesn't like seeing other people win. Does not He thinks all. it steals his shine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I've definitely uh, been around people like that. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I, I can't pay any, any, any mind to him. Not at all. There's no hate. There's no nothing like that. But- you want to accept the boxing match and you want to talk your crap, cool. I just sit there and nod yep. and I'm like, I would talk less and train more. 100%. Because I've, uh, like, there's one thing I do is I train. Yeah. No, oh, dude, I, I see your stories. You're looking fit, you're looking sharp, you look like you're in shape. Have you been good. boxing, like, in your past? I mean, I've been boxing on and off for years. Yeah. Like, literally yeah. years. And I did Taekwondo for about 10 years. Yeah, right. Um, right. So I've Holy always moly. been into some sort of martial arts and that's what kept my, my brain sharp. Yeah, it definitely. really kept me, that taught me discipline and stuff. So, I really, I have been. So this is not new to me. So getting into this is is definitely not new, but being in boxing camp is probably the best thing ever. Yeah. Ever. It keeps you sharp. I wake up every morning. I'm, I'm talking 4.35. There's a lot of morning. purpose there as well, you know? Like you, you're waking Heaps. up, you've got something to do, you've got a goal in mind, you're keeping like focused. You, it keeps you out of partying. Not that you're probably a full-on party animal anyway, but I mean like gives you a reason to not be drinking and doing shit every weekend and it just keeps you occupied, which I think is a good side. It does. I mean, I, look, I wake up yeah, like on my own, no alarms, 4.30, 5 a.m. and I'm up and oh, I'm wow. like, bang, first thing, go. 
and training like a monster and it makes you feel good. Yeah, hell and yeah. Then, and then it's kind of the other things that fall into place. Then I'm like, okay, physio once a week, your sports massage once a week, and you fix every little thing that you probably wouldn't have done if you weren't in a exactly in that boxing camp itself. It so forces I, you to yeah, do that stuff. So I'm hitting new levels. And for me, life is always about that. I've never been for the mediocre life. Yep. So I'm always trying to push myself. So this right now is more for me than it is for him. No, that's awesome. I, I'm more training for the fight after him. Yeah, okay. Uh, there'll be definitely another one after. Yeah, right. So you want to do a few? Yeah, I'll do a couple for sure. Is there an agreed weight for the bout or is it? Yeah, 80, between 80, 85 kilos. Oh, okay. What are you weighing at the moment? 81. Oh, beautiful. So oh, you're well. starting on weight already. I was always around between 84. I was 84, so I'm dropping down quite quick. I'm 84 at the moment. Yeah. And okay. I haven't been able to train a lot lately, but I, if I'm going to fight, it'll probably be like 76, 77. Well, if I go completely ripped, I'd go down to about 76. Yeah. But then I'd lose it too quick. This is why I'm doing it very gradually. Yeah, that's so a healthy I, way. Yeah, I'll probably end up coming in at 80 flat. <clears throat> okay. Perfectly on the dot and go. Do you know what he roughly walks around at, his weight? Because he looks a pretty, he looks he's, big. He's dropped down a lot, a lot now. I, From what I was told, I think he's around 84, 85 now. Oh, that's right. So apparently he did drop a lot of weight, which I was, I was happy about because I didn't want them to stop the fight either. No. Yeah. But I mean, that's the thing though. It's like sometimes cutting too much weight. If he's walking around at like 95 or in the 90s or however, whatever he weighs, like sometimes can work against you. Like a big weight cut and you lose a bit of your power and you can also be a bit fatigued and stuff. It's Smaller, not like it's- Yeah. Yeah, you can, it, it can work against you. I feel like people that fight close to the natural weight are the people that are at the advantage. Oh, for sure. You watch for a lot sure. of pros cut like 15, 20 kg and you're like, fuck. They, they can do it though. They're pros. They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and it works for it them. It works against them. them though. They're cardiovascular. Yeah. That's going to affect you all, like no matter what. 100%. For me, I've been fighting at the same, you know, that same thing, same weight, the same speed. So I've got my speed, I've got my strength, agility, and I am fit. Mm. So I nothing's gonna. And you've got what three rounds? Nothing's gonna stop me. Is it three minute rounds? Uh, no, minute and a half. Oh wow! Well, but I don't think he's got the cardiovascular. To, to usually, take people. I'm. I don't know him well enough to say this for sure. But usually, people of that frame, unless they're like a football player, they're not going to be very fit. No, they won't. He won't be <coughs> able to withstand that. And I'm going to go at him literally. The whole minute and a half. You got four and a half minutes. So it's Ma- you'd be able to keep up a pretty high volume if you just train nonstop. Uh, I'm not going to stop. Yeah. I, won't, and I, won't, I won't give him. I'll cut that ring off. He's going to be in one spot and one spot only. It, it's 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 going to be uh, going for a, a KO. Or you don't really mind. No KO. Beautiful. KO or, or definitely a stoppage. Fuck yeah, I like to hear it's that. It's not going to yeah. be anything else. I guarantee yeah. it. Like, Beautiful. Yeah. What ounce gloves are you fighting in? Do you know? Sixteen. Sixteens. Yeah. For and then sure. no headgear. No headgear. That should be good. I love that because I don't like anything, you know, your peripheral vision. Yeah. I no, I do not like headgear, headgear either, bro. I used to, wear, when I used to compete when I was doing Taekwondo, I hated wearing headgear because you'd kick and you can't see the kick coming. Yeah. I used to use that. So yeah. I'd, bring my, I'd bring my foot up from here, go from the side so you couldn't see it and bring my heel down to the top or of Or if head. you get hit with the headgear and it moves to the side, then you've got to like try to- <laughs> Then you've got to try and move it. so annoying. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad we, do, we don't have to do that, which is good. But we're wearing 16 ounce gloves. There's not much that can happen. I don't think- yeah, people are like, oh, violence, this, this, that. I'm like, guys, don't worry. <laughs> well, 16 yeah. ounces is usually the training and sparring sort of gloves, right? Yeah, people fight in them like uh, amateurs. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, do. yeah, yeah. Like without it, but they do, they do 16s and headgear, yeah. which is like, yeah. you punch it through. Very them. hard <laughs> to get knocked out in glo- them big gloves and headgear. And so headgear. it's good you aren't wearing, wearing headgear. So Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be great. And <sighs> hopefully, you know, uh, the best thing about combat sports is, you know, maybe we can drop all the bullshit and, you know, Shake hands after. Well, it is a respect thing at the end of the day. It, it is should be. martial arts is a form of like discipline and respect, and yep. that's it. It doesn't matter if you've got animosity or if you absolutely hate each other, or even if you're on good terms. It doesn't matter. Like you're going in there and you both want to win. It's a fight. Like, mm-hmm. and there can only be one winner. Like, and essentially at the end of it, the best thing is shake hands, move on. Exactly. Don't have to be friends. Just fucking let it go. You know. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever be friends with someone like him, and that's personal choice because yep. certain people just won't have anything to do with, but I will definitely shake his hand after the fight and we can leave it there. Like that's what men should do. Yeah. This is the old school way of doing it. And it's, it's controlled and there's, you know, referees. And so yeah. like, I think some people still don't like the whole fact of the boxing, but it's like, we're not meeting up at the back of a pub for a bar and yeah. brawl. You know what I mean? This is, it's, it's thing. And I'd like, I've, I've, I'm now a voice for a, for a charity as well, for mental health. Oh, beautiful. And it's a big thing for me because it's not just, Hey, take some money from the boxing, giving it to them. You know, I'm a voice. I'm working with them closely as an ambassador. I'm doing a lot of stuff with them. Um, so it, it's good to be able to do some good with this as well. I love that, man. I really love that. I respect that a lot because the whole mental health side of things to me, especially is a really big topic that I've dealt with over the years. You know, people look at someone like myself and it might look like I'm always having fun and I've got a lot, blah, blah, blah. But, mm-hmm. you know, like I feel like over the years, my mental health took a huge hit and a big decline more than it ever was in my younger years when I had no money, had no jobs, living in my parents' spare room or my grandma's house or whatever, you know. And over the years, I've had really bad bouts with depression and anxiety and PTSD, all sorts of things. Growing up with 
crazy ADHD, you know, my brain's either fucking a million mile an hour or it's impossible to get out of bed. Are you sure we're not twins? Because I had the exact, <laughs> exact same thing. Might man. be. Exact same thing. This is why I got into sports, <coughs> into combat sports itself. Well, if we're if twins, that means you must've been born with a big dick because I've got a fucking cashew. What if I did too? Oh fuck, then maybe it's a genetic thing. Identical, identical twins. twins. Yeah. Now it's identical. <laughs> now we're definitely twins. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I really like that, bro. That you, you're raising awareness and being a voice for stuff. And I think, especially here in Australia, you know, you look at the, I spoke about this a bit with Harry earlier, you know, you look at like the suicide rate here and it is a lot more men that are taking their it own is. lives. It is. And it's horrible, <laughs> mate. It's, it's because there's that stigma around it where it's like, oh, it's weak to speak out. If you're a man, like don't show emotion, be big and strong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you look at some of the toughest dudes in the world that are pro fighters and they speak out about it. Like it's not weak at all to like speak out. I highly encourage anyone out there that's struggling or battling things, man or woman, reach out, they don't have to go to a psychologist, they don't have to go to doctors, just even if it's a friend, let someone know you, you, you're struggling. Don't suffer alone. Couldn't agree more. Because you you'd be very surprised. Some of the most richest, famous people in the world that I've met are quite sad. Yep. You know, it's, and I think that's the thing is a lot of people look at these people like, oh, well, he's got money, he can't be sad or he's got this, but it's like, no, just because someone else's problems don't seem as bad to your problems doesn't mean their problems aren't problems. Exactly. exactly. Everyone feels, we've all got emotions, we've all got a heart and a brain, we all, go through these feelings. So whenever someone talks about the mental health stuff and doing stuff to raise awareness and to help out, I, I really respect that. And I think in terms of like fighting and sports, I think it's the best platform to do it. Absolutely. I think so too. I think a lot of people like, because they've got this stigma about combat sports and they yeah. think it's all about violence. What they don't realize is if I wasn't put into the gym by my father because I had yeah, vicious ADHD, mm. always angry. And as a young kid, I couldn't handle emotion. So I was so harsh on myself and hated myself because I couldn't figure out why I felt the way I did. I, I want to interrupt quickly. Like, is it, do you, with your ADHD, because this is something with me, do you feel like, just touching on what you said, do you feel like a lot of the time you feel like you're not doing enough? All the time. You're very hard on yourself. To That's the, the point, same as me. Yep, to the point where my body gives out, but you still mm. don't feel like it. Yeah. And then you've got to come to terms with the fact that you need rest when you need rest. Yep. You got to kind of do that. Set your set your day. So what I do is when I'm up four or five in the morning, then I'll I'll train, get most of the stuff done by twelve. Yep. That's nap time and relax. So I'm already relaxing then until I can start again, and then late afternoon. That's how I prepare my day. But it took years and years to try and get that. How, how old are you now? I'm 34. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm 28, and like <laughs> even till this day, I'm still struggling bad with ADHD. I'm finding new little ways and new little things. I'm learning and I'm learning as I go. You know, I've tried medications. I've tried all sorts of things, but a lot of the medications tend to make new side effects and new problems. You know, it might help the ADHD. It might slow the brain down a bit and help you focus and yep. help you relax, but also work. But then you're like, oh fuck, now I can't sleep, or now I've got sexual problems, or now I'm having withdrawal problems because I didn't take it today. And yeah, yeah. There's I I went through a lot of that as well. I can't really take the medication for ADHD yeah. at all because because I suffer some, from such bad anxiety. Mm. It'll set it off like that. Well, it's an amphetamine. A lot of them. Yeah, it's an amphetamine. Right. So, so those so. those medications will set me off. Yeah. So well, then then it's uh, one's up, one's down. So it's it's really bad. But the only way this is, I think, why I came into like a very regimented army style type life. So like my everyday would be, you know, I, I write it down. I've got to be regimented in what I'm doing. And when I get it done like that, I start letting go of that feeling of needing to, or feeling like I don't, or I haven't done enough. Yeah, I can relate to that big time. <clears throat> I think one thing for people with ADHD is the lack of clarity or like a routine. I think if you wake up with a, like a bit of a list, like I write it in my notes or my calendar or something, I'm like, cool, here's 10 things that I need to do today. Two of them are training. One of them is just to eat healthy all day. Mm -hmm. I've got a meeting at nine or an appointment at 12. Or I'm going to film from two till 4 p.m. Waking up with an idea of what your day looks like helps significantly. All the time. You tick them off as you go. Then you can sit in your bed at fucking 8 p.m. at night. And you're like, if you start feeling like you're getting into like that, oh, I, haven't, I feel like I haven't done enough today. Fuck, I'm useless. Oh, this or that. I'm yep, fucking, yep. And it just goes deeper and deeper and you just feel fucking shit. Yeah. But then you look back at your phone or your notes or whatever. <clears throat> and you're like, cool. I actually completed all my errands, all my tasks. I did some work. I worked on myself. I trained. I ate good. Now I'm going to sleep. And That's I did, it. I did do enough. Earn your rest. Exactly. exactly. If, you start, if you start crossing off all those to-do lists that you did from the night before and you've already got it there and put it out there, all right, you do it. Then you've earned your rest. 100%. You earn that TV show. You earn that massage. You earn that sit down doing nothing. Earn it. And it gets rid of that you. guilt. It gets rid of that feeling of guilt. Exactly. And once you get rid of that, you start letting yourself relax when yeah. you need to. And then, then you start feeling okay with it. And every day gets a little bit easier. But in saying that, you know, today I, I'm going to be honest, guys. I had an anxiety attack in the middle of Woolworths. 
for no reason. Well, it happens, mate. That happens to me pretty regularly. You know, it just depends on where you are, what's happening. And that's just life. It happens, you know. And I like that people like you, even myself, upfront about it, talk about it, put it out there. There's no shame in that. Like, it's, it happens to the best of us. It happens to mm-hmm. everybody, man. Like, it's, it's a part of life. And I think then when people realize it's, it's normal to feel that. It's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a thing. It's an emotion. It's a feeling, you know. It's, and I think another good thing that I've learned to deal with is, Rather than trying to block them out like I used to, like I went through vicious cycles where I'd have bad anxiety. I'm like, fuck, I'm just going to smoke some weed and that'll just numb that for today and then wake up and it's worse. And I think one thing that helped me was acknowledging it, acknowledging the thoughts as they're yes, there. You, have you, to. you might be in Woolworths or like for me, I might be in Woolworths and people might be looking at me or something and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm feeling anxious today or something like that. I don't know if I've got a bad, it's already been a shitty day so far. I don't need this or whatever. But then you like acknowledge it and process the thought rather than trying to block it out and run from it, you just acknowledge it a bit and you're like, just a thought. It's just a thought. Like, because a lot of the people we suffer a lot from more of like imagination in our heads than actual reality. I find true. It is true. That's pretty yeah. pretty much why I think some of it happens to. Well, that is anxiety. I think <laughs> you know, it's anxiety is either worried about the future or what's happening, or worrying about something you've done in the past. You know, it's a lot of the time it's not reality. And if it is reality, then it means like you just got to you just got to try to deal with it the best way you can. Yeah, and not run from it. So yeah, you kind of just have cool. to take it. Like now, <laughs> if I feel it coming on, I'm just like. Here we go. All right, just deal with it. You got this. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you yeah. can always, I used to sit there and hate myself that it happened, but look, hey, it happens. Deal with it. Is well, how you deal with it now, I think, def- defines you as a person. Is definitely. there little things that like trigger it or like things that it was, sometimes you don't know what's triggering it, but you've just got anxiety? So, because like I don't, oh yeah, I don't have it, so I don't understand. Yeah, I, you know, it was funny because during maths, we used to try and explain what, what happened to, to a lot of the guys who never had this. Yeah. But there'll be times where obviously if you're like really upset, really angry, something really triggers you, possibly then. Yep. But for me now, that doesn't happen then at all. Yeah. For me, I'll be, I'm, I'm talking happy go lucky. And it'll hit me right then and there for no reason. Wow. And so, and then I can't even figure out what the trigger is. Yeah. So today I was. Oh, you I just want to go home really quickly or something? That is the story of my life. Ask him how many times I've been like that before. Yeah, it just <laughs> yeah. it kind of just pops out of nowhere. Like oh, I was doing groceries, fine. All you could see was sweat just dripping from everywhere. And I'm talking. I just yeah, drenched, wow. then started shaking like that, and then I start feeling like I'm about to throw up. So you kind of have to, and then you know the shortness of breath. So for me, I live quite close to where the Woolworths was. So I was like. Yeah. I'm going to finish this. Yeah. So I was quickly putting it through and then I'm like, all right, go outside, breathe, breathe, breathe. And I, I, well, then when I got into when I got into my apartment, I had to strip naked and just lie there and just... <laughs> yeah, okay, well. It's gone. I just oh, rub one out. It's that's, the way, that's the way you're dealing with it. <laughs> well, I was shaking too much. I probably would have done a real good job too. But um, it's funny you say that, bro. Like, I am, I've had a million anxiety meltdowns in the past. I've been pretty good for the most part over the last year now. I've, I've found a good sort of medium ground now where I can manage it, but... In the past, many times I've been in Woolworths and I've had a shopping cart full of stuff and I'm like, fuck this, I'm going home. Yeah. And I'll just dip. I'll yep. be in the gym and I'll just dip. I'll, I'll have a whole day of filming and I'll wake up and I'll be like shaking a little bit. And I'll be like, what is going on? Like, what's wrong with me today? Like, I've got a great family. I've got great friends. I've got a nice house. I've got a car. I've got plenty of money to do whatever. I've helped my family. I've got people that love what I do. No one's after me. Like, I'm not doing anything illegal. I've got nothing realistically that I should be that worried about, but it's still there. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most dangerous things about it is someone like myself to the public eye with my videos, with my stories, all the stuff that I've done over the years. It's like, I always, and it's not me being fake, but it's like, I like to put out positivity. I like to make people laugh and all these things. But I think one of the worst parts about these mental illnesses, whether it's ADHD, anxiety, depression, it's like a lot of them are like, they're silent. They're like invisible. They are though. Because you yeah, could it's... look, you could walk past somebody in a shopping center who's got a big smile on his face with his family, he's happy, whatever. But inside, he could be just as anxious as you or me at our worst. Of course. Of so, course, I think that's the danger. I think that's, a, that's also also a big reason why people need to calm down with the whole attacking people on um you know online and all this yeah, stuff. They're too. Ruthless, they're so ruthless. The oh, shit they say, man. Look, I'll be honest. I've watched some of the stuff of what they say about the the mass people because it's like a cult. Well, it's didn't cult Olivia thing. get death threats? Oh, she's gotten everything. She had people like I saw on the news that she had people pulling up at her house or something, screaming and, and so like that. that's and fucked. Yeah, that that's too far. Yeah. I mean, from what she's been portrayed in just that one situation of the show. You can't do that. And like, that's still a girl. That's a woman. That's a life. Like, Even if she's a shitty person, that doesn't warrant someone well, to imagine go Imagine how scared fucking... she was sitting at home while people are pulling up to her house and shit. Yeah, yeah. That's look, so you, uncalled you can never, for. You can never warrant something like that, man. Like, I mean, I think people just get too wrapped up in all this yeah. stuff. This online stuff, some of them get too wrapped up. I talk about criticism. Mm. I, 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 got, I got papped at, uh, at the airport waiting for the missus. And... I, I, one of the comments, and you, I've been really lucky because I've like 99.9% of all comments 
and positivity I get from everyone has been amazing. Yeah. Positive vibes, great comments, really, really good support. And then one woman turned around and went, not gonna, he's not going to keep her long with those type of flowers. I went, wow, so chivalry now has a price tag. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was I going to do? Rock up with 200 roses and look like the biggest wanker saying, mm. please look at me, guys. Look, I've got to... I don't do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I also got other presents. I can't walk around the airport with a bunch of Air Jordans. <laughs> I look like a dickhead. So, yeah. so you can't win. And what, what killed me more is when I went to this woman's page and I didn't say anything. I, I did. I was like, I was like, that's a pretty superficial thing to say. But, you know, it, she seemed like a, she was a homosexual female. And from my experience, that's why I've got a sit who's gay. You know, they're usually quite... A, quite a lot more like caring and a bit more nurturing a little bit that yep. they come from a different side of things and for that to come from her I was just like what kind of a thing is that to say yeah like was she just a random or like a paparazzi no random oh right she just said that she said that okay so yeah. it went out on an article she yeah. wrote it on the article oh gotcha and I was just like Jesus what? yeah <laughs> you know the, you know the, the very well known saying my mama used to say to me it's the thought that counts Th that, well, that's what I said whether I, you got one little rose or one million you fucking so think yeah, I put the photo yeah, yeah. up and then put, uh, what happened to the thought that counts? Mm. I was like, you know, and I know she loved the flowers, but for the, for the <laughs> I don't know, what's, what, do you want to take a tree? Just take a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, this like, shit has <laughs> happened to me fucking nonstop since I started doing social media. Like a couple of years back, he painted my house pink, like bright fucking pink. I think I saw that. He's put it up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was, I was in America and I've come back and he's picked me up and they, they painted my whole house bright pink. And I was like, you know what? I, I didn't hate it. I liked the house. It looked cool. I was a little bit like, just like, oh, this is going to be an effort now. But, and after I was like, you know what? I'm going to donate a hundred dollars every million views that this video gets, hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, whichever one it was yes, to the Breast Cancer Foundation, just to try and do something nice, you know, just to educate people, put the video out there more. Can, even if I donate a few grand, I think it was a thousand dollars every million views. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And the only comments I remember seeing was, Oh, only a thousand. Add a few more zeros. You can do more than that. You've got more money. And I'm like, what the fuck are you donating? So yeah, ridiculous. Fuck. Look at your health. Why do you enjoy like donate 10,000 mm. per million? Like this is this is the, the thing wrong with people. That's wrong with society. Yeah. Yeah. Now you start helping, but oh, you're not helping enough. But if you yeah. said nothing, you wouldn't have got hate. Mm. If you didn't, didn't donate at all, you would have- yeah, You tried nothing, to do good, but you got shut on for doing and then good. You do, and then you enough. do good. And then people are like, oh, you only did this for like likes and views. Yeah. I'm like, well, no. Like I'm just trying to make it so it's not just about the video and the views. I'm trying to do something nice to give back where I can, you know? But yeah. And it puts that little thing in your head. Like it makes you not not, not want to do that again to receive the negative backlash you get from doing good shit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so it's, ridiculous. It's, it's mind boggling. You know, you can't, you're never going to win, but at the same time, you just got to have that backbone and get rid of yeah, those idiots. And just it. stop thinking about them because there's always going to be idiots. As long as you know you're doing your good, that's it. One thing I love about the loyal following that I have is anyone that says something stupid and negative like that, they go and attack them. <laughs> and, and I love them for it because I'm like, I don't need to say anything because someone else is going to jump in as long as it's not hateful type things, but they really yeah. get into it. I'm just like, that's big respect. Yeah, that well, That's what respect. comes with being yourself, man. You know, yeah. I think when you're true to yourself and genuine, most people these days with how much stuff's on social media and all the reality programs, everything, a lot of people can see through fakeness now. Yeah. And I think people can see your genuine personality and that you are a good dude and stuff. So I think that's why you've got a good cult fan base there, you know, and yeah, they're being pe cool. people will defend you because they feel invested in it. They feel like they're like, they feel like they know you and they love you for who you are and they've, you've made them feel some type of way, you know? Yeah. So they're there to back you up and stuff. And I've had plenty of the same stuff as well. People have gone into comments and like, oh, at least he's doing this or this or that. And yeah, I just sold a house recently and someone commented, oh, who is he? And then some other comment was like, oh, just another idiot that doesn't deserve to have money and doesn't deserve this. And then he just showboats this. And but a person that says that, uh, that you're a person that doesn't deserve to have money is a person that doesn't know how to make money. Yeah. Okay. However it's made you've got a good hustle going. Yeah. So unless you came up with that hustle or you can't <clears throat> make that money, stop hating on people that can. I, I grew up poor as shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you did Neither of my parents had money growing up. No one handed me nothing. I had to work. Like, fair enough, it's social media is a relatively new field. Not so much anymore, but when I started, it was. So it's like people are like, oh, anybody can just go and be an idiot on camera and make money. I'm like, well, why don't you go do it? Go do it. Exactly. Like, if it's that fucking easy. If you can become that big and make that kind of money, then go and do it. Yeah. But people can't can't grasp that. They, they, they're, they're jealous of the fact they can't do that same thing yeah. because at the same time, they think it's so much easier than working in nine to five, but no, it's really so much, it's so much smarter yeah. because you still have to put in hours and hours of, of, you know, getting your content right, of filming, of, you know. There's a big, there's a big risk filming, that comes with it. Yeah. You know, man. you're not, you're like, I, I've hurt myself a million times. I've risked getting fined and all sorts of shit. I've arrested. Arrested. <laughs> I've risked, you know, humiliating myself, which is, I kind of enjoy that. You know, I've risked 
doing certain things that are going to rule out ever possibly being able to get a job in the future because I was so confident that this would pay off and yep. this will work for me. I don't need anything else. Like I know this will happen. But then I feel like outside of the work is where the harder stuff's done, dealing with the criticism, dealing with people sending you your address every day. Oh, I know where you fucking live. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, what are you going to do about that? Like dealing with all the hate when you try to be a good person or when you just do something out of good character and people are like putting you down, like, oh, you're just doing this because of that or do better. And it's like, Dealing with light shit, I feel like was the harder part than all the work. And I've never been one to care too much about what people think of me, but when you do nice things and people still find something negative to say, that's what's like, ugh, God, this is shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I agree, man. I think it's the same thing with like this situation between me and Daniel is I couldn't care less for anything he's ever done because his way of fighting is like a child. Yeah. So I just roll my eyes. It doesn't bother me. But then he went and ranted and saying that I'm doing this thing for charity. Um just to look like the good guy and doing it for clout. And I went, fuck you piece of shit. Mm. Because on the day he went live saying he wants to do something for charity was the day because I went behind the scenes and I'll tell you these guys this now, um, behind the scenes, I went to him saying, look, you know, rivalry aside, why don't we do some good with this? Let's do it for charity. Yep. So I gave him the idea. I said, let's both do it. Let's do blah, blah, blah. He went live that night saying, I'm doing it for charity. He never came up with a charity. Wow. I don't think anyone wants to meet with him. And then attacked me saying, I'm doing it for clout. <laughs> And I went, oh, you fuck, you low life piece. After of shit. you went and told, yeah. I, and I was like, I was like, should, should, I, I could just pretty much screenshot what I sent you and the date and yeah. out you like a, you know, really badly. Or and then he's like, then you're giving a minimal amount of money because you only get fifteen percent of your ticket sales. I'm giving a, a mass amount. I went one. You're not giving a mass amount because you're not getting that much because I yeah. know what you're getting. Two, I'm getting paid more than you. And that's why he thinks I should I should give more. And I went three, 15% of ticket sales. Yeah, but people are actually going to see me. You yeah. can't give your ticket sales. No one's going to watch you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and so you're exactly. an idiot. And this what this thing I have with this uh, with this charity was not just, a, it's not supposed to be just a dollar sign. It was to be a voice and advocate for them. Yep. And I was like, that's just one thing you don't do. And I was like, see, people like that, you can't win. And then they use the... the the best things that you try and do, and they use them against you, but you know what? People do that all the time, mate. Like even for me, you know, I've come out many times and spoken about mental health and tried to offer advice or support or just try to shine a light on it to help people. And then the next day I'll post a video, I might be fucking with him at the house for a video. You know, maybe I'll rip his mattress apart and put a pool underneath and he'll fall through into the pool. This is a while ago. Then someone will comment, how can you, you know, preach mental health and to not do this, then you just bully all your friends. I'm like, there's, uh, that's okay. taken out of context. Well, that person didn't get, didn't get a fucking sick bed after either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's all taken out of context. I'm like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. If I want to preach to like be kind and, you know, mental health things and speak out about it and don't feel ashamed, like I'll talk about it. If I want to fuck with my friends, I'll fuck with my friends. But you guys all prank each other. See, there's just stupidity. That, that That's stupidity there because <clears> there's clearly not a, not like bullying where, where one of you is going to, is you know I don't fuck really with bad. people I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You're not you're not putting people down. You all prank each other. Yeah. I see it. Like if they can't see the context behind what you actually do, then that's just ridiculous. Well, that's it. And if I've ever done anything in public around people I don't know, I would never ever even touch them with a finger. I would never ever be physical. I wouldn't do anything that could damage their properties. <clears throat> it would be a matter of me doing funny talking on a phone or something that could confuse them. But for them to think like, oh, it's bullying into your friends. I'm like, my friends know what they signed up for. I, I know what I signed up for. But then people might come up and be like, oh, do this, do this. I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, you're so different. I'm like, it's taken out of context. Oh, that's, just, that's, <laughs> that's micro picking. It shit. is. Yeah. Micro picking. And those people are the, and I hate to say the, the, you know, the Karens and the Garys of the, <laughs> yeah, of the, the people. Garys. The Garys. Is, is that the dude That's the version? male Karen. That's yeah, the, the male, male Karen. Karen right? I've never and, heard and that. Those are the ones where, there's the ones that I don't, that's where I get my back up. I'm like, I can't take any of that crap. That's, yeah. that's where I put my foot in, you know what I mean? I can be respectful, but if you take that too far and you start being an absolute idiot, I'm like, no, nah, I'm out, man. 100%. No, I agree for sure. Coming back to like the show and like the experience, what do you think would be like the best thing you could say about going on the show? What's like a thing in particular you say like, I'm so happy I did this because of this reason? Like, Oh, that's hard to say, you know? I guess because it's such a different thing you're going to do in your so life. So many things would have happened too. So many things happen. It is so cool to be, you know, at first it's cool to be involved in TV regardless. For sure. It's cool to kind of push your limits as a person. If you're someone like me that loves pushing your limits, so always doing something different. Yep. So I love that sense of it too. Um, I loved working, like, I love kind of working with everyone as well. Do you know what I mean? And Making work, new, new friends and stuff as well. Yeah, you, yeah. Look, we made some great friends that like, I'm probably closer to them now than some of my other friends. Yeah. And they've all integrated now, which is amazing, especially, I mean, Al's number one, right? Yeah. You, everyone knows of the, our relationship between me and him. But, you know, between that and between <clears throat> relationships you make 
the, the fun you get to have kind of doing that. And I suppose, yeah, the, the growing and then the opportunities after, it's just insane. That's awesome. I just, all I can say is, is be yourself. 100%. It comes out if you're not. I agree. Oh, people will be exposed for fake, you know. Like oh, if, you're, if you're being fake, you will be like called out for it. And if, and if it doesn't happen straight away, it will happen eventually. And it, I think- yeah. It always pays to be yourself and just do what you believe in kind of thing. You launched like a clothing line I've been seeing a bit of. Collaboration. So what happens was I wanted to do, this is where I still love working with with friends and I, I, I keep it together like that. So I wanted to release a, a line of hoodies yep. with, with meaning behind them. Uh, one was called the Shoei, which is obviously ours <laughs> one. And it's it's a Shoei with a with a bit of a definition of like kind of what it is and, and stuff like that. I'm going to get Bam, I'm going to get Bam Bam on here one day for an episode. He does the shoeies. He does. <laughs> yeah. We know Bam Bam does shoeies, of yeah. course. And then my one was good luck, good riddance. Now, obviously it's the iconic thing I said on my vows when I walked out and good whatever luck, else, good but the, the message is behind it is it got nothing to do with the ex-wife or the wife or whatever you want to call it. So were you actually married? Not officially. Oh, so you it's didn't quite, symbolic. you didn't quite no, get there. No, no. It's all symbolic. Thank fuck. Um, but it was more like, because uh, why I wanted to do this was I had young girls going, and we were like, oh, ever since you had done that, that good luck, good riddance, I had a boyfriend that was blah, 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 mean to me, and I did the same thing, and it was good luck, good riddance, and I just walked away. And then other people kept saying similar things, like the guys and girls would give me similar situations, similar yep. stories, and I was like, shit, okay, it's kind of, it's touched people, because you know the day after I, that, that aired, mm. I had people in the streets cheering. I had, I had group. I had, I had groups of uh, you know the construction workers in, in buildings oh, chewing wow. off the side of things, and <laughs> me, I was like, "What <clears throat> is this? Is, it was it that big? Was it? That's like, crazy. People, That's a pretty fucking cool wine. That's a cold. It's cold, but it's good. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's it dope. Works. So, so I didn't realize the impact it had. I'm oblivious to it until that. So yeah, it was more of just we wanted to release these as a you know like a limited edition and whatever else. Yep. But going back to it, yeah, look, a friend of mine's got a whole hoodie line and does stuff like that. And I was modeling for her on the, on the day, and she was like, "Why don't we do it together?" And I was yep. like, "Perfect," because it helps you, helps me, because you can go and do it, you know, do that. And I'm doing the same thing now, but I'm designing a formal wear and some really cool you're jackets. Right. You're everyone, pretty stylish, man. Like you're like pretty, you're pretty so. fashionable, if I do say so myself. I try. I try. So I now I'm now I'm like designing some of this stuff with another friend who's got a business already. So yep. I'm working with all these people, um, and we're collaborating together. And now I'm starting to design bits and pieces with them, um, all limited edition stuff. And then I'll work on see how we go. And that's cool. Yeah, maybe man, you can style me one day. I have a terrible fucking sense of fashion. I would absolutely love to. Please. There's only one thing. What is it? Anything. The, the um. Those, those, those fish slip-ons, what are they? The, <laughs> <laughs> the fish slides. I'm not sure they're going to go with uh, what I dress you that's in. That's fine. But I mean, you know. That's pretty high fashion, the fish shoes. I mean, that's probably the most fashionable item I own. <laughs> but I would love that. I, I, would, I wouldn't actually mind. I've always said it'd be cool to get a stylist to make me like, look cool in some nice clothes. I've got like a lot of cool clothing, that, but I just don't really wear it much. I'm happy to help, man. I'm mm -hmm. here. What, what's an older brother for? Exactly. exactly. The older mean? brother, the handsome brother with the bigger dick, better fighter. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, don't get rid of the slides. They're actually all you. They're you. <laughs> they're you. They, well, they, they trademark. I've always worn Crocs and just gross, shitty shoes that people were like, oh, but then I wear them for so long and I'm like standing in front of private jets in like Vegas with fucking fish shoes on. But you have to. In that yeah. sense, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't be you. Exactly. And then people start wearing them. Yeah, like, where's I, your I, new I, shoes you got? They're oh, the camel toes. They are horrid. Look at these new, this new pair of shoes he just brought. Hey, don't go as far as saying they're horrid. <laughs> <laughs> they are fucking stupid. Okay, no, okay, I'm caught in between, right? Because you're looking at a. Have a look. Have a look. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's so funny, man. Because you're looking at like a the toe, like a half, like a half Birkenstock slash half Fear of God essential mm. type type slide with a little bit like of a an Jesus act, warm slide with a with a Jesus slip into it. What pants would you wear those with, you reckon? Oh, linen. Ooh. Hey, beige linen. Oh, so you got like, like full like um oh, like yeah. loosey goosey like chilling. like Kanye like, almost, uh, kind like, of like, like Byron Bay like hi hippie kind of maybe I, I'm, I'm yeah I'm thinking like Tulum Mexico linen you know Tulum beige thing. that I would like look that. really good, um but this would even go with if you went like the yeah like the yeah. honestly like the, like fear of God and the and even Yeezy the way they do it yeah they they it looks like a Yeezy brands. shoe didn't it well, that's why I said Kanye I was like I could picture Kanye making something like this and selling it for a thousand dollars you could and it, it would it would catch on. Is it comfortable? Because I'm, I'm kind of- I don't, I don't rate them very much. And if the brand watching this, I don't even know which brand it is, but if you'd like to do a partnership, feel free to reach out. <laughs> Maybe next episode, I'll give you guys- I tried them on. There wasn't bad. The toe split up was it just felt a bit a felt a bit different. Yeah. yeah. Vi Vibram? Yeah. I just like I it because it's the closest to a camel toe I can actually get these days. <laughs>
Oh, it's nice and soft in between. You know what's too? weird, bro? Oh, Since becoming like single, I feel like less women want me. Isn't that weird? Or maybe it's just because I'm yeah, just not paying attention. No, you know what they say though. You know what they say. You know how they say when you get a girlfriend that everyone kind of wants your type thing. Uh, but I don't know how true that I'm is. All, I'm also not really putting myself out there. I'm just focused on me. I was me. about to say, if I don't I, think, if I don't I think was you're to, putting yourself out there. Yeah, you're probably I, now in, in a good space, in a good headspace where you're now focusing on your own shit. I need a breather. There you go. So you're not looking around. You might not even notice. Yeah. And I used to be like that a long time. So you won't even notice anything. It's, it's all like, that's all head noise that's just yeah. going over your head. So I'm just not in a rush anymore, bro. It was a very draining breakup and the last six to 12 months was draining of the relationship. It wasn't toxic. I don't have anything bad to say about her. She's great. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of great times and stuff, but it was a very intense relationship. So, you know, the breakup was very draining and stuff like that. So it's been at least six months and I'm still like, fuck, I'm nowhere near ready to... And it's not because there's still feelings there. Like I've moved on pretty pretty quickly and, mm -hmm. and healthy. You know, she got a new guy pretty quick as well. Happy for her. Yep. But I think like being single now for this long, I'm like... This is nice. I can wake up. My house looks the same way it was when I went to sleep. I can, everything I need to do, you know, I don't need to worry about putting energy into someone else's cup. I can fill up my own cup and I'm not looking for it, like I said. Like sometimes that's all you need to do is fill I your need own it, bro. cup up, man. I need it. And then it will come when it's ready. Exactly. Until then, I feel you like if, you, if, you, if you're too desperately looking for something, it's when it, it just won't work. No, it has never. to just come. It just has to come naturally. You might meet someone and be like, whoa, okay. I'm, maybe I'm not in the right spot or ready to commit to a relationship. But if someone cool comes out and I'm like, okay, fuck yeah, this is dope. I'll go with it. I'll go with the flow and just see what happens. Exactly. Right? That's what happened in my case, man. Like, it was like five, six years like, ongoing. Yeah, and right. then it just kind of happened. It was a cool little story, but it just happened. And it, the way it happened was so good. It was just, yeah. and it was easy and it flowed yeah. and it was fun. When it's just natural and it just works. Yeah. And that's, that's what the last relationship, we just met at a party and it just worked, just went natural. And then that's where I'm at now, bro. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not in a rush. Like if I wanted to go on dates and do stuff, I would, but I'm just so happy just chilling. This is the longest I haven't had sex for in my adult life, I think. Which is kind of crazy. Oh, I've actually done some long time terms, man. Look, I, I could go into a training schedule and not not have sex for like six to eight months. Oh, whoa. Well, sometimes, whoa. yeah, and be really- I was like, talking like two weeks. <laughs> 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 nah, it's been about three, four I've months. I've done it, man. I've done it. I, go, like, I swear I get like monk status in my head and I just switch. But bro, like as you get older, I just like, sex is fucking amazing. It's great. And I think it's mm. healthy and it's really nice. It's a nice connection, blah, blah, blah. But- I don't know, man. As you get older, you're just like, fuck, I just want to do other shit too. Like, I had so much sex in my last relationship. <laughs> so many, like, just threesomes and just, it was just intense. And I got to the point where I'm like, I'm burnt out. I need a breather. I'm happy yeah, to go the next six, it months. It also takes a little bit of the joy out of it too. It so does, bro. Doesn't it? Like, 100%. I think if you don't have it as much or it's not that in your face, you'd bro you're going to appreciate it more. It's like the forbidden fruit you get to have every now and then. There you go. <laughs> when you do it every day, it just becomes more of like, Part of your routine rather forbidden. than something to yeah. look forward or, to and enjoy. Or even a chore. It might exactly. Like <laughs> a chore. It turns into a chore, 100%. Yeah, that's the thing. There's no fun in chores. It's easy just walking into his room when he's asleep and waking him up for a quickie. Yeah, man. I thought I don't even wake up. I'm still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. He won't press charges. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so what's, what's the future looking like for you at the moment, bro? You just got this fight coming up, working on the clothing. Any more shows? Are you, are you interested in getting back into any more TV? I honestly think by next year I'll be on another TV show. Beautiful. We're working on it. Um, I am looking into going acting as it's a lifelong dream. Yep. And now that I've got the, uh, I suppose the ability and now the time to kind of get that yep. involved, you know, I'm, I'm going to go focus on that, but I'm designing a lot of stuff. So I'm going into a lot of designing clothes and a few things coming up with that. So it's going to be great focusing on my fitness and I've got a few jobs coming up. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, a lot Beautiful. of things coming up. That's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, I want to focus a bit more on the fighting, have a few more fights, uh, get some training in, and yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to aim for uh, a Game of Thrones prequel, sequel Ooh. One, one day, or I'm going to go straight to Hollywood, man. That's, Beautiful. That, that's the dream. And I can see it happening. I hope so. I can man. see it happening. So do I. Good, so. Looking, good looking Aussie dude. I can just, it just will happen. Yeah, I hope so. I think as well, you put your foot in the door, you've been on television now, you've got a bit of a name for yourself again. Like you're just, you're doing well. So I, I reckon you'd do well with that. Acting's always something I've wanted to get involved in. Mm -hmm. I think taking the route of social media was like originally planned as a stepping stone. Get on here get a few fucking million followers around the world, show that I can capture some attention and viewership, yep. transition into a bit of acting as I grow older. I just never really ended up getting there yet. I've just got so caught up in the business side of things with this and buying like my houses and stuff have taken a lot of time and just wanting to work on new things. Like the podcast has been great. So yep. yeah, acting is well, definitely something I'd like to do one day. You're single now, mate. This could be a perfect time to maybe at least start looking into it. Do yeah. I mean, like I started looking into it and got into one of the best, well, I, the, the best in Sydney that, you know, everyone says you've got to go see this mm. guy. Uh, Les, I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> done. Yep. And ended up getting into him, which is really, really cool. Beautiful. It's quite exclusive. So I was like, 
perfect. Learn want. from the best and then, you know, aim for the stars. Well, that's it, bro. I think like you said, like now that I'm single, you know, it's like I don't have to worry about constantly going back and forth between America and Australia and now the quarantines are gone. I did quarantine four fucking times for two weeks and traveling around all the time, doing things, not being grounded and positioned in one spot for long. Mm-hmm. It was really hard for me because I haven't done a lot of content the last couple of years because I was just burnt out. I was over it. I stopped enjoying a lot of types of videos I was doing and that's why now like, this is this is the most fun and most in, enjoyable content I have made in years doing podcasts. This is like the fifth or sixth one now and I'm loving it. Loving just sitting down getting to know more, more about each other, other people, mm-hmm. exchanging stories and learning things. Like this has been great. So I think if I was still tied in my relationship, I probably would still be stressing out and wasting time and going back and forth, not knowing what the fuck I'm doing and just yeah. in that negative mindset. But now that I've had time to really sit down, just do a big factory reset and just yeah. go through a bit of the heartache and the pain and be like, fuck, like I've just come out of a pretty crazy breakup. Mm-hmm. Me and her loved each other. It was it was sad, but I mean, it was also for the right reason. It was a mutual breakup. Yep. We're both happier now and we, we got out of there. There's, good, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel, so. There you go. There always is though. You know, you're just going to find that. And I think, I think that's what you're lacking, maybe. Like, I think you were just lacking a little bit more wholesome stuff, man. Purpose as well, bro. Like, purpose, purpose is a big thing. Like, I, I just, I'd wake up and I just would find things to do to distract my brain from the bigger problems. And I'm like, fuck, what am I doing? Like, and especially with ADHD, you know yourself, it's like a day or two of doing nothing and not knowing what you're doing can get really, like, really dark in that brain, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yep. now that I've got this and I've been wanting to do the boxing stuff for a while, but obviously my injuries and that, but once that's fixed up, I'll be doing the boxing as well. Maybe we can fight on the same you're, card. You're going straight after to fix it. See, this is what I mean. This is the, this is like the time now to go after, yeah. fix what you need to do. <clears throat> Look, I did all my injuries in Dubai. I fixed everything in Dubai, yep. which was great. Now there's a few issues because it was all on the right side. So you twist, yeah. twist, twist. Now I'm fixing everything because of that. And it's, it's amazing. And you're right. You know, I was having this conversation the other day. I think men crumble without purpose. 100% bro. Especially like, just say like sports stars, big actors. When you've been there, I think people crumble without purpose. They lose it. You know what I mean? It's like and one I of the most important things in the world is to have a bit of purpose. Yeah. You don't have something to wake up for and be like, fuck yes, I'm doing this today. And it doesn't have to be like an out of the order. It can be something small. Like you said, some wholesome shit. Like it could be a training. It could be like a relationship you're working on. It could be a goal or work. As long as you're, you've got something that's somewhat productive and you're working towards, I think. Yeah. Which is something I've lacked for the last few years. So. There you go. At least you're finding it now. That's man. it, bro. I'm I'm back now. I'm feeling good. I'm motivated. Enjoying this. Get this back surgery done, and be cool to get into the um the boxing and stuff like that. I want to do a few big ones. Let me know when. I'm going to bring you some uh, some little presents to the hospital. Beautiful. I, I think it's needed. Yeah, I'd love that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'll get you like a big photo of me as well. Put it directly yeah. above my bed. Yeah, I'll just be like this every night in bed. I even think I know exactly <laughs> the exact photo too. It's gonna be fun. Ooh, Ooh I yeah. like this. There's a photo Check. he's talking about that's just amazing. We'll have to get the address or whatever, and you can you can send us whatever you want. <laughs> Don't even have to subscribe. Eh? This, this one's free. Oh, <laughs> I, like, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I, I did want to ask one more thing before because we, it's been about nearly an hour already. It's been going pretty quick. Oh, no time, I feel like we could talk for days. But in your opinion, now you've got now you've got a, a missus now. But before, like, what would you? How would you define as the perfect dream girl? Break down what you look for in a woman. What's like the dream girl to you for all the girls watching out there? You know what? That's fairly easy. I mean, look, you always want that first initial attraction, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's, I think, the physical attraction at first is kind of what gets your attention. It is important. I definitely think so. But you know what? For me, it was, I get dark days. Yep. I'll admit it. I get dark days. It's hard to deal with it sometimes. But I always wanted someone that was so down to earth and, and caring and that could deal with those dark days. Yep. You know what I mean? Or just give a, a basic understanding of it or try to have an understanding of it. So it's just someone that's very open-minded, down to earth. I, I hate, I couldn't care less for anything. I just don't like pretentious people. Mm. I like a very happy, go lucky, you know, yep. down to earth person. Because once you got the attraction there, you know, that can, that can fade or that can be great. But I think for me, it was just, you know, Honestly, just really easygoing and someone that can understand the person I am. Someone with patience to understand the dark days, like you said, is very important. Yeah, yeah. And look, I don't require much, to be perfectly honest with you. It's not that I require something from you. No. It's, it's, it's maybe just understanding that, yeah, be patient. Let me get over it because I'm, I'm quite well aware of myself. Yep. And I'll come back and I'll, I'm more good. Or just someone that can just be, okay, he's having a bit of a time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just well, that's what I liked. I watched a little video clip <clears throat> of you. You were, I don't know, you were like by the water eating with the girl you're partnered with on the show. And, you know, she was like saying something to you about like, oh, you know, like I only hurt you because you're insecure and stuff like that, you know? And you were like, oh, but what if you actually genuinely did hurt me? You know, there's a lot of people out there that refuse to take accountability if they have hurt somebody, you know, like people like myself. If I upset somebody, I'll be like, 
I'm sorry if I fucked up. I, it wasn't my intention. Yep. I'm sorry that I did, and I'll do my best not to do that again. Whereas this conversation in particular, you were just like, you could tell you were getting like very like over it, very frustrated, which yeah, fair I enough. Was, I was, you know, that was that was as, as genuinely frustrated and over it. I was like, I'll get at that point. Oh man, yeah. but like, I, I think you're only human, and and most people, if they were in your shoes, would have either cracked it ten times earlier or ten times worse. Yeah, I think you handled it all really well, to be honest. And it's like you said, it's like people are like, oh, you know. If I've upset you, that's on you. It's your fault. Like, be tougher. Don't be insecure. It's like, no, you've said some shit. You upset me. Like, yeah, man. I can you, apologize. You're right. They don't. <laughs> you know, there's one thing I, I do screw up. Sometimes I could I could speak off. I can you know raise a voice or whatever else, and I do. And I always I've always admitted that yeah. I am perfect. Um, but the best thing, at least, is I, I'm self aware. Yeah. So if I've ever done that, I'll be the first to come back and say, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have said that. It's not okay. And nor should you ever accept that. Yeah. I'll, I'll do better. I, do you know what I mean? Well, I, account I, accountability I, is so important. I think so You, too, you have to be accountable of actions. And that's me. I've, it's just, we're never going to not stop making mistakes. That's just fucking life. Agreed. We're going to always make them, but the best we can do is learn from them yep. and own them and like, just use them to grow stronger and smarter, not to keep repeating those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You can't, you can't put a number on it. We're going to continue to like, fucking, if you have kids or if I have kids, there's going to be more mistakes there to be made, you know, like fucking, there's always, we're always, always going to be making mistakes. It's just a part of human it's nature. never going to stop. So accountability why, is super yeah, important. Yeah, but that's what I've been lucky with this girl now. Like, there'll be times she'll be like, okay, look, hey, didn't really like that. I, I'm not used to this, 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 that. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Didn't even realize. Had no idea. Like, yeah. You know, we're two different people sometimes. But like, uh, someone that takes the patience and is kind enough to talk to you like that, then you pick up on it straight away and you're like, oh, shit, okay, yeah, I got you. I, like, that won't yeah. do it. I won't do it like that or or something like that, you know what I mean? I think just sometimes just, yeah, bro, patience, kindness, so, and just a little bit of- So for someone who enjoys like being alone <coughs> so much, like you said, how does that work with like a relationship? Like, do you have times, do you like, are you with her much? Are you not with her much? Do you have time away from her? Like, how does that, do you like being around her maybe? I don't know, yeah. Obviously think, you like being around I, her. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think <laughs> nah, I fucking hate it. <laughs> God, I hate when she's there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it works both ways. Look, she's only just come back on Saturday. All oh, right. Okay. All right. So we, oh, sorry, Friday. Yep. So we spent, we spent the first few days together. Um, and then obviously like, I took her to go see her parents and surprise them. Now she's with the parents for a little bit. We're doing, we're doing bits and pieces oh, here yeah. and there. Yep. Um, I think that works because there are that you can be together and go do some fun stuff. And there'll be times where I just prefer to be completely alone. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be a day, a few days, a week, just at least a good day or something. Yep. And the one thing I said straight from the start was just, uh, we can't screw up my training. Mm. My training's got to come first. Like, not, not if you're dying and I still have to go training <laughs> and then I'll come visit you later. Hopefully you're still alive. Four, sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, even if there was something wrong or we had a little spear for, if, if there was something like that, I, was, I, I said, I was just like, look, let me do my training and then we'll always sort it out later. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, as long as my training doesn't stop, I'm good. But Someone I think understanding, it's good. Very yeah. understanding, yeah. And I just think it's just healthy, healthy balance. I need to understand your journey and realize you're chasing goals and big dreams and things too you know mm -hmm. and i think that's like with me with not the recent ex the one before i've got two kids and i would like be so late to pick them up from school and stuff like that and Wait, I would you have two kids yeah i've had two kids for one of them six one's nine brock and sam really i didn't even knew you that. almost didn't remember sam's name yeah no, I, I, I always get mixed up but. you know i've had two kids i had brock when i was what 19 Young. You were I, had, young. I had a young kid, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like I'm always late to pick them up from school and then I get there and they're like, Dad, you fuck, you're, you're late. And they swear at me because I let them swear. And I'm like, just get in the car. Then I wave a bit of candy about, you know, because they're my kids, so it's not creepy. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'll just butt in here. I'm completely talking shit. Oh, <laughs> I nearly missed up the names. I tried to think off the top of my head. I'm like a name, a name. And then you jumped in. And you played it so well. That We're was very good. good at just making shit up. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you. That was quite good. He called me off guard when he said two kids. I was like, I didn't know. Well, <laughs> you really guys were quite intent, though. You just picked up on that real quick. We do it a lot. To nah, people. we've got a thing like a few of the other boys in Brisbane. They got a segment on their podcast called Lying to Lockie. They Lockie? literally lie to me every single week for a whole segment. Bro, they get, they get, they literally. <laughs> contact his closest people behind his back like his dad and like oh can you prank call Lockie today and say that you lost your job and you need money and stuff and he'll get a call from his dad oh Lockie yeah, he told me I had a 54 grand tax debt and I'm like <laughs> fuck sake dad <laughs> and, then, and then they just butt in on the call and say we've lied to you oh. so we've all got bad trust issues now between the boys of the group but <laughs> well, it's I think I, it started now for me too guys <laughs> thanks guys great now I've, now I've got another person on edge <laughs> but um, anyways bro I think that that's just about everything. Fucking really appreciate you coming on and having a good chat and 
It's been lovely to see you. Man, thanks for having me, guys. It was a good little chat. We have to do it again soon. 100%. I reckon we should go and talk off camera in my bedroom, just us. But uh, look, I was going to say the same thing. I just didn't want to say it, but... You know, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the, the missus won't mind, man. No, yeah, man should we chill? If it's with a guy, it's like it's almost not cheating. <laughs> True. This, this is what True. I've heard. I agree. I'm not sure she won't say anything. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, Heath, for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And massive shout out to Brand. You can find his socials in the description if you want to go and follow his journey. Don't miss his fight coming up. He's got a clothing brand. Just go and check out his stuff. He's an interesting, beautiful human being. And I really, really like him. Thanks so much for coming on. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.